Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. This is Ankush here from Alif Consulting. Welcome in our Azure Weekly Updates video. In this video, we will be going to talk about all of these updates. And all of these updates are in generally available, which means we can use all of these updates with our workload to do the enhancements or with the Azure services, right? So let's quickly jump into the deep dive and understand about all of these updates. The first update which we have is for Azure storage now allows us to basically uh, use the cross uh, region service endpoint for the Azure storage account. What that mean is so earlier we were having the endpoint uh, which is Microsoft dot uh, sorry Microsoft dot storage endpoint service endpoint which is available on the Azure storage account and then we have the VRAT integration which we can do uh, with the storage account but now we have an option called Microsoft dot um, storage dot global service endpoint this is a new service endpoint which allow us to configure uh, the or connect uh, the Azure storage account from the uh, geo uh, or I would say the cross region services. So let's take an example. If your storage account is in the East US, you can use this this uh, service endpoint to get connected it from the other region as well, right? So it's kind of a uh, I would say uh, uh, a control which you can put on the storage account. Uh, the next update is there is around the API management authorization, right? So with this one, uh, it uh, allows to providing a simple and reliable way to unbundle and abstract authorization from the web APIs. This capability enable developer to access a service maintained authorized token store, allowing them to build their own services connections. With authorizations, developer can automatically acquire, use and maintain the authorization token without the need of write a any code. The next update which we have is for uh, TCP support for Azure Container Apps. So Azure Container Apps now supporting a TCP based protocol other than HTTP or HTTPS for ingress. What that means is now you don't, it's not like you just only host your HTTP or HTTPS based application. Now you can use the TCP based things. You can um, have a run your application or maybe the specific application on like a port 22 or maybe on a 3389 port kind of thing as example and you can use this right so that's allow you to communicate uh, based on the tcp based protocol on a specific port within the environment additionally a container app can expose a tcp port externally for in ingress when a custom uh, when using a custom virtual network the next update which we have is for again for azure container app now have the inboard ip restrictions so this with this one we can specifically block or restrict a specific uh, connection for inbound uh, connectivity over the TCP or HTTP or HTTPS traffic. The next update which we have is for AKS. Uh, now we have the operation abro abroad, uh, about, uh, sorry, not abroad, <laughs> about uh, in the AKS. What that means is, so in case of there is any long, uh, long pending operation which is running into the AKS, now we can go ahead and about uh, that specific uh, operation right so what kind of scenario it is going to be supported if a uh, uh, if a long operation uh, long running operation is stuck and suspected to be in a bad state of or feeling failing the operation can be aborted provided it's it's the la latest it's it's the latest running operation on the managed cluster or the agent pool second if a long running operation is stuck or failing then operation can be aborted uh, operation that was triggered in the error uh, triggered in the error can be aborted as long as the operation does not does not reach a terminal state first so these are the condition where we can use the operation about feature in the AKS for the long running operations the next update which we have is for uh, Azure monitor Azure monitor alerts now suggest the signals to alert on so earlier what we need to do we simply need to write the uh, the, the the CUDA queries or to queries to basically trigger the alert but now we have a list of uh, the popular alerts available into the uh, into the into the Azure monitor so if anyone is creating an alert or anyone is configuring the alert that's where they can select the the list of uh, uh, they can select the uh, the alert into the list already populated list of uh, the alert to configure in the 
environment additionally we can select a popular signal that also has a popular conditions co commonly configured that condition field may be automatically populated for you or maybe you can go ahead and change that as per your requirement as well the next update which we have is for uh, sql server now we have a centralized uh, centrally managed Azure benefit, uh, Azure hybrid benefit for uh, uh, for the SQL Server. What that means is, so earlier what we need to do, we simply need to enable the hybrid benefit by going on the SQL Server extension or for the VM, and then from the where we need to enable uh, the SQL hybrid benefit, either it's the standard or the enterprise version. But now we have a simply a one console where we can put all of the all of the available license with us, uh, which is come, which is basically have we have with the software insurers, we can simply go ahead and centralizedly configure all of them, and that from there automatically all the SQL uh, hybrid benefit would be automatically enabled on the SQL data service as soon as you enable the hybrid benefit on it. Right? You simply don't need to go and do the uh, the hybrid benefit again and again for all the server. So everything can be managed directly from the centralized. Right? But one thing you need to keep in mind, uh, this is something can be run by only the limited number of role. Uh, they need to uh, give the access of this, then only they would be able to apply it, right? And this increase the visibility, allow us to identify the ad additional cost saving opportunity and enable us to get the most value out of the our SQL Server investment. The next update which we have is for Azure Advisor, and I would say it's a very good change in terms of how you do see your uh, history of the VM utilization. So earlier we was only having uh, the limit of 14 days of look back period in the advisor, which allow us to give us the overall VM utilization and accordingly give us the right sizing and the potential cost saving for our virtual machine. But now we have a custom look back period, which we can configure into the advisor that allow us to basically configure uh, the look back time up to 90 days either it can be 14 21 30 60 or 90 days and it give us the greater visibility on the our last 90 days vm utilization and accordingly we can basically it's it can give us the right sizing and the right uh, cost saving potential cost savings uh, 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 cost savings opportunity which we have for our virtual machines this configuration can be applied uh, on the subscription level. This is especially useful when the workload have a bi-weekly or monthly peak such as the payroll and the application. The next update which we have is for Azure uh, Virtual Desktop have a several feature enhancement which has been there. So the first update or first uh, feature which is there FS logic profiles for AD join uh, uh, join VMs in Azure desktop is now generally available. We can seamlessly access uh, the share from the AD join virtual machines for the user that are synchronized from the Azure AD and use them to store the FS logic container. FX logic 2210 for Azure virtual desktop. This is uh, is now generally available. The next update which we have is uh, Azure virtual desktop inside at scale. This is again generally available allow us to reporting the key information across the resources in one view. Uh, RDP short path for uh, public network using the uh, simple uh, traversal uh, underneath NAT protocol is now generally available. Uh, so as, as DP, uh, RDP short, and, uh, short path improve this uh, the transport uh, reliability of virtual desktop connection over the public network by establishing a direct UDP based data flow between the remote desktop client and the session host. The next update which we have is a systematic uh, uh, net support for uh, sh uh, RDP short path on the Azure virtual desk uh, Azure virtual desktop using the turn protocol uh, travisal travisal uh, using uh, using uh, relays around the net is now in public preview this feature is an extension of RDP short path and established a UDP connection indirectly using the relay with popular uh, turn protocol for for symmetric net Watermarking on the Azure Virtual Desktop is in a preview. Help us to prevent the capture of sensitive information on the client endpoint by, by enabling the watermark to appear as a part of remote desktop. Private link for uh, Azure Virtual Desktop is in a public preview. Enable access of the session host and the works space over a private endpoint into the virtual network. Uh, the last 
features or the enhancement which we have is uh, with the Microsoft team application window sharing now generally available user can choose a specific window to be shared from the Azure uh, from the Azure virtual desktop screen directly from the AVD solution. So these are the updates which is there for the Azure virtual desktop. That's it in this video. I hope you like this video. If you like, please click on like and subscribe for more upcoming videos and feel free to reach us if you have any questions. Thank you.